Here's a GRE quantitative comparison question. Let's take a look. The figure pictured is a regular octagon. A diagonal of an octagon is any line segment connecting two non-adjacent vertices. Okay, well, before we move on with this, let's talk about some of the vocab in this question, right? First off, a regular octagon just means that all of the sides and all of the angles in this octagon are equal. In other words, it looks exactly, they're telling us that this octagon is exactly what it looks like. All of the sides and all of the angles are equal to each other. Now, that's going to come into play in a little bit, but that's all we need to know for now. Okay, then they define what a diagonal is. A diagonal of an octagon is a line segment that connects two non-adjacent vertices, right? So what is a vertex of an octagon? A vertex is a point, right? One of these corners. There are eight vertices here, eight little corners in this octagon. And a diagonal is a line that connects two non-adjacent ones. So for instance, this point right here and this point right here are adjacent, meaning that the line that connects them is not a diagonal, it's a side, right? But this one and this one, right, these two right here are indeed vertices that are non-adjacent, so that means that that's going to be diagonal, a diagonal. Um, as are this one and this one right here. So I'm going to draw that, boom, like that. There we go. And then this one and this one, there it is. And then this one and that one. I promise I'm, I'm doing this for a reason. And this one and that one. So I've just drawn all the diagonals in uh, from, from this vertex. Okay, now here's the, the headline of the question. We want to know what's greater. The number of diagonals that are parallel to at least one side of the octagon compared to the number of diagonals that are not parallel to one side of the octagon. Well, I'm going to give you sort of an intuitive way to go about this. And then if you're the kind of person who really likes to, to seal things up, we'll do it a bit of a longer way. So the shorter way first, and then the longer way. Here's the shorter way. Let's take this, this sample that I've done, right? I went to one vertex and I drew all the diagonals I could from it. Well, let's take a random sample from, from, this, uh, from these lines that I drew. How many of these diagonals are parallel to one side of the octagon? Well, let's look at them one by one. This one is not, right? From here to here is not parallel to one side of the octagon. Uh, but this one is. This one is parallel to that and that, right? So that's a parallel diagonal uh, versus this one is not, right? The one that cuts the diagonal in half is not parallel to any side. Uh, this one, however, is. It's parallel to that side and that side. And then this one is not. So from that sample, from these five diagonals that we drew, it looked like three of them were not parallel and two of them were. Now, if I pick any other point on this octagon, it's going to be the exact same story, right? Uh, I'm going to have three non-parallel um, uh, diagonals and two parallel diagonals. And how do I know that? Well, I know it because it's a regular octagon. This is a, this is, if I spin this around, this picture is not going to change. doesn't matter which point I pick. This is going to be identical every time. So that may be enough for you, and it, it should be enough for you to say that quantity B is the correct answer, which it absolutely is. But if you're a little more mathematical and want something a little more exact, here's another way to look at it. I'm going to erase this a little bit more here. So here's, here's one important concept. A line is either parallel or it's not. It has to be one of these two, right? So if I can figure out the entire number of all diagonals in this octagon and then figure out how many of them are parallel, I should be able to compare. So here's how I would go about this. If I, if I go to this point and draw all the diagonals, which I've already done, right? We know that there are five. There are five diagonals originating from this vertex. And then if I go to this one, right, and I do the same thing, right, uh, one, two, I'll, I'll draw these out, one, two, three, four, and five, right, another five. But when I get here, I start to be a little limited, right, because I've already drawn this one from here originally. So this one is going to have to go one, two, three, four. And when I go to this point, there are only going to be three, right? One, 
two, three. And when I go to this point, there are gonna be two, one, two. And when I go to this point, there's only gonna be one more diagonal I can draw because all of the other diagonals have been drawn, right? So if I count these up, five plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one, I find that there are 20 diagonals overall, right? And then how many of them are parallel? Well, it's actually pretty easy to draw all of the parallel diagonals. We just go side by side, right? So like how many diagonals are parallel to these two sides? It's gonna be one, two. How many diagonals are parallel to these two sides? It's gonna be one, uh, one boom, two. How many diagonals are gonna be parallel to these two sides? It's gonna be one, two, and then there should be one more. Nope, I got them all, right? I, and I, if I count them up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, I did forget it, seven, eight. There we go. So there are eight diagonals that are parallel. And by process of elimination, if there are 20 overall uh, diagonals, that means 12 of them must not be parallel. So quantity B is greater. I personally prefer that first way, but you can choose how you want to do it. For more GRE tips and tricks or to sign up for my live online course, follow the link on my profile.